Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick, uh, The Strain, Episode 2, Season 6, Identity, William Bibiani, Alonzo Duralde. Um, fun. Yes. <laughs> no, this show has been consistently entertaining. Yeah. Uh, there, was, there was a kid, a couple of stumbling blocks at the beginning where it felt like it was kind of spinning its wheels a bit, but now it's just, it keeps moving forward and there's it's always plenty of incident, which is yes. nice. Yeah, yeah, no, Even totally. Even something like Hannibal, which we love, you know, there's only, only like three things can happen in an episode. <laughs> Here it's just boom, boom, boom. And we got a new master and i feels bitchy and F gets laid and yeah. then get murder and then blah, everything yeah. moves, they moves, moves. They moves. don't have time for Langor here, you know? No, they do not. In fact, I don't even know where to begin. Um, so you pick. Oh, okay. Well, uh, so F is still in D.C. Yes. Uh, he's managed to uh, convince his friend at the State Department uh, that, that his anti, mm. uh, whatever. Anti-vampire anti -vampire virus. Anti-vampire virus will yeah. work. Uh, he, in turn, uh, gets a woman at a big uh, pharma company involved. Uh -huh. uh, she and F have a fling, even though F's girlfriend is back in New York taking care of his bastard child. In so. all fairness, I don't think they're officially dating. I don't think there's. I don't think he's put a ring on that in any in formal mm. way. Did they even have they even really had sex in a while? I, I mean, well, they've had other things going on. You I, know? That's my point. You're is a little tired at the end of the day when you're killing vampires. There's an element I like about that subplot where it feels like okay, F is free from New York. It's nice just to be at a restaurant. It's nice <laughs> to be able to catch a cab and not have to worry about a vampire yeah, attack. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like he's on vacation. I, I get that. Yeah. And then, you know, and, and maybe they have a, an out-of-town time-to-be-a-clown relationship. But, you know, I think I felt uh, he was kind of cheating on, on What's-Her-Face back in New York. So but he deserves what happened no, to him. No, okay. I'm just saying. When it, when it all started up, I was like, whoa, okay, well... All right, well, F, for, that's where you're going to be? I, I wrote down, this is going way too well. <laughs> yeah. like, I didn't know if, I thought she was going to betray him or something, and instead right. it's just everyone dies except yes. F. Uh, and yeah, and that sucked. That's, yeah. that's, that's not a good thing. I did like the four-star general they met who had like the giant four stars on his beret. <laughs> I don't know if that's standard issue or not, but by God, you knew that was a four-star yeah, general. Well, you know, you earn them. You're going to rock them when you that's can. That's right. You know, uh, I, didn't, I didn't go to general school just to be called Mr. Four-star general. Come on. <laughs> Um, so uh, I, I will give points to the awful child, uh, Zach, that really? uh, that when he spotted his, you know, monster mommy across mm -hmm. the street, he did not like immediately go running toward her. Oh, that was that was good. Although the first his first bits in this episode freaked me out. Because when, 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 like... Oh, when he's talking compassionately about, how are you doing? Oh, I, didn't that sound he had like... A, he had a weird look on his face, like, like he was just like, this is human behavior I'm going to emulate for a while. Right? And when they hug, I thought they were going to cut to his face being, like, all, you know, yeah. with no emotion whatsoever. Like, and he zooms in on the eyes, and he's twitchy eyes, <laughs> and everyone suspects the kid. Yeah, I thought he was going to, like, I thought this was him going evil or, like, under the psychic you know, spell of his mom or something, yeah. like from afar, like some vampire power we didn't know. And uh, I think that might just be the kid acting. I think I, it might I, be. Okay, yeah. listen, I gotta tell you something. Kid, If it, I, whoever is worried about us being mean to this kid, um, I'm sure he's he's wonderful. He uh, maybe it's the direction. I don't know. This yeah. kid is a problem on this the show. Kid this kid as, is, the kid as the kid as written is a problem. The kid as written, like it's hard to work with what this kid has got. I'm yeah. not. It's the character we got a problem yes, with. I'm yes, not yes. trying to be mean. Let's to the be actor. clear. Uh, but it's it's really really rough, and it comes across as really really creepy. And I was thinking like, oh, maybe he's gonna get some weird new mom. Sort of Oedipus fixation on another character, and like, oh, yeah. you know, like yeah, who knows? He, look, he's had a lot of trauma. He you has. Know, where we have to be forgiving, I guess. Uh, so yeah, so that you know, we have the big showdown in the church with the um, that was cool. We like calling them sniffers. I think it's a cool name. I know it's not the right one, and everybody gets annoyed about I don't, it. But I don't care. They're sniffers. They, yes, they the are, sniffers show up, and uh, I, I, for a moment, he was like, "Oh, get to the church!" And I'm just like, "It's not that kind of vampire. It's not really gonna help." <laughs> but they, whatever, they go into the church. Yeah, I thought they were gonna start yelling sanctuary. Right, and then yeah, and then it's a great, nicely choreographed sequence. Uh, boy, we got rid of Fitzwilliam before he had a chance to do fucking anything, didn't we? I he? know. That was kind of a, I mean, like, it wasn't Maybe even the like, brother is going to wind up gonna, being a key character now. Maybe, but it was just really, really weird. There's all this buildup, like, oh, Fitzwilliam, he knows everything that's going on. And he right. was like, well, they've got these things here. And uh, 
Yeah, okay, well, I'll just die now. Yeah, like, now that I've given my exposition, you may behead me. You don't even build him up to make it seem like... That was the weird dramatic thing. Like, you build a character like that up to make it seem like they're going to be important, and then you kill them, so it's like, oh, man! You know, you're building the suspense. Or, Here was or, you, or you create a, a an atmosphere where it's super random that anybody could die at any moment. Right. But they haven't really done that up a until now. A lot of characters on this show feel kind of safe right now. Yeah. Like, I don't think Vasily... I think Vasily is fine for yeah, a while. Yeah, like, they have to drag in, like, randos to get killed. Just it, to sort of keep the body count. It up, would disappoint know. me, but it wouldn't surprise me if Dutch died at some point. But yeah, this season, yeah. if only just to make Vasily's life worse. Right. You know, like I, I really hope the kid dies. You know, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of possibilities. Um, so, so we've got our new master this season. Yes, this, this and and frankly, you know, if you could be an 80 year old Nazi or Marilyn Manson, you're going to go with Marilyn Manson, I suppose even so. if his dick fell off. It, well, I think everyone's dick fell I off. I think so. Yeah. Everyone's dick fell off. <laughs> a moment of silence. I like saying that. I don't get to say that very often. But uh, I like the way the scene was handled where I, of course, assumed it was him and then closed his eyes and looked up. It's like, what? No! <laughs> it's like, it's it's like... If, Me! Like, I'm over here! It's like you didn't realize you were about to fulfill someone's cuckold fantasy. Like... <laughs> You know, you just sort of wake up and was like, ah, oh, yeah, this is going to be awesome. This guy is going to watch. Oh, we're doing this? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Swear your fealty to new Marilyn Manson. And he doesn't even get to keep the wig. I thought the whole point of, like, making him Bolivar now was that he would look distinctive because Bolivar always wears that goddamn wig. Well, uh, you know, I think he probably got a look at how good, uh, uh, you know, Ephraim, uh, Ephraim yeah. looks without the hair. It's like, oh, screw it, I'm ditching this. Um... <laughs> Uh, you know, yeah. I actually, weirdly enough, I, I just saw Real Genius again this weekend. Oh, it's they, so great. they screened it in 35 at Cinefamily. Oh, it's such and, a wonderful uh, and, movie. And, and, and at the big moment of the Master Passover, I was reminded at the end of Kent going, "Okay, God, let me have it." Oh. Like he makes that noise, like he dirt in his mouth. Ew. Oh. Uh, so Samantha <laughs> Mathis is, I think, going in some interesting places where yeah. she was initially portrayed as this kind of like hot ass, get out of our neighborhood, vampires. <laughs> and now I think she's, she seems to be sort of more human and compassionate and trying to figure out the balance between, you know, martial law and, you know, uh, just sort of common sense. Yeah, no, it's good. We didn't get a lot of her, but I, I, I got the impression early on that maybe she would be introduced as like, a hero who goes so far that they become the villain. Right but now, I think that I'm, I'm actually liking her more as a voice of difficult reason. Like this is difficult to deal with, but we have to deal with it, and we have to make all these decisions. For me, the the hardest thing about this episode, even though I kind of had fun with it, when is the Indian restaurant going to pay off? Oh my like, god! What is the point? I of this don't scene? know. I thought like we were just introducing <laughs> some new characters and then they go off and do something. Here, the whole thing is like, oh, we have to deliver food to like, and I guess there's a fifty dollar delivery fee well, right now. It, like yeah. I get it, but still, like, what is the point? I don't, of yeah, this? I don't get why he keeps hanging out there. What what's I, the what is the payoff going to be? It it is kind of distracting. It's really distracting, and it's just like this whole thing. Like, okay, so we got F trying to like get the government to make an a, an antivirus virus. We've got like a new vampire who's going to hunt down the master. We got like which, by the way, he was out during the day, and then he says he needs people to be out during the day. I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was a screw. But um, we got all this stuff going on. And then we've got Tandoori to and go. Will the Tandoori get there? <laughs> Holy God, I hope it does. Did they bring the non? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I worry about this subplot because it's just like this has got to go somewhere, I, right? I'm, I'm hoping it does, but they are taking their good sweet time. It's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. Oh, I man. did it. I did like uh, a Satrakian's bedside manner. You know, like you, you know, we have a pediatrician. He's got to give a shot, and he'll start asking distracting questions. But oh, what do you like baseball? Did him, you know. Ah! So I, I like how he started just asking questions. And <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, countdown from 100. Because you, you really don't want to be up to, you know, you, you really don't want to tense when your head's going to get cut off. You want it to be a loose kind of, you know. Is, is, well, does that make it harder? Is that like a, like a more difficult chop if you're like. Might be, yeah. I think you want to kind of, you know, does he have lean to cut in. the head off? Dude, that's my thing. If I got bitten by a vampire and it's like, well, this is it, I wouldn't want my head to be cut. Maybe like cut it like down here. Because when you get your head cut off, there's like that, supposedly that like split second where you can see your body like behind you. Oh, and I can't imagine like a worse kind of horror. I thought you like, were worried about open casket, okay. No, I think we're past open casket right now. I don't think anyone's <laughs> having a funeral. I think we're at the point where everyone's just on a pyre. Like, <laughs> like, like, mask, times, mask in Times Square, just thunk, you know? But, like, yeah, I don't know if 
I want that moment where my head falls off my body and then I'm looking back at my bloody stomach and I'm like, well, that happened. Like, I don't know if that's the way I want to go. That was out. like that's like that old Saturday Night Live sketch with uh, uh, Candace Bergen as like Anne Boleyn. It's like, will my head be fired at my body? <laughs> anyway, yeah. All right. So yeah, things are things are exciting. Things yeah, are picking up, and maybe next show. week we'll find out what the hell we were spending all that time in the Indian restaurant for. So mm. come back for that.